The enigma of the mysterious Incan megaliths with elements of polygonal masonry is not really a mystery if we conduct a chemical and structural analysis, which would immediately reveal that these huge boulders are made of ordinary limestone and moreover, artificially created limestone. But such truth is not needed by the organizers of this attraction, because without a mystery, there would be no tourists. In 2012, the Ministry of Culture of Peru, concerned about the poor condition of the walls of the fortress of Sacsayhuaman in Cusco, invited geophysicists from Russia to investigate this problem and find solutions. In addition to ground-penetrating radar surveys, samples of stones from the masonry and from the quarry, from which it was presumed these stones were taken, were also collected. This sampling work was carried out by Igor Alexiev, invited to the group of scientists as an independent researcher, whom I contacted and he willingly shared the details of this expedition. The initial analysis in the field showed that the stones dissolve in an acidic environment, such as vinegar. Subsequently, the samples were sent for geochemical analysis to the Institute of Tectonics and Geophysics in Khabarovsk. The analysis revealed a complete match in the chemical composition of the samples from the masonry and the samples from the presumed quarry. Both consisted of 70% calcium oxide, meaning that the material of these building blocks is not some kind of hard diorite, as many mistakenly believe, but ordinary limestone. However, there is one significant difference that contradicts the official version of the origin of the stones and the masonry as natural stones, inexplicably carved. After all, pre-Columbian Indians had no knowledge of iron and iron tools. So, the analysis also showed that the samples from the quarry contain organic remnants, like small shells while no such organic remnants were found in the samples from the masonry. In other words, the stones in the masonry are already processed limestone with altered crystalline structure. The speaker on this topic, Viktor Nikolaevich Berdnikov, candidate of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, deputy director of the Institute of Tectonics and Geophysics in Khabarovsk, to whom these samples were handed over, suggested that the limestone from the quarry was previously calcined to obtain unslaked lime, from which the plastic building mass was then obtained after slaking it with water. The thing is, during the process of heating limestone up to 1000 degrees Celsius and subsequently mixing it with water, all traces of organic remnants vanish due to this thermochemical process. According to Berdnikov, there can be no other explanation for their disappearance. So, we have the so-called Fortress of Sacsayhuaman which according to geophysicist Berdnikov, is built with artificially created stones. Traces of spatulas or trowels plastering tools are still visible on these stones. Could these giants, weighing tens or even hundreds of tons, have been obtained by calcining natural limestone? How much forest had to be burned in lime kills for this, and was there even such a large quantity of forest nearby? Peru is not Siberia or the jungles of the Amazon, where forests and timber have always been abundant. Let's remember the methodological principle known as Occam's razor, formulated by the Franciscan monk William of Occam. The principle states, Entities must not be multiplied beyond necessity, or in another formulation, the simplest explanation is usually the best one. Let's take this razor in our hands and cut off all the mythical and mystical elements, extraterrestrials, reptilians, ancient advanced civilizations, and simply look around attentively. For example, at this rocky relief formed by volcanic lava, as scientists believe. This is the Rotadero Formation. It is located near the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. And this is the view from the other side. But what is it? It strongly resembles a mountain of construction lime. But where did it come from in such quantities? And there are traces of extraction. Over hundreds of years, the plastic lime has turned back into limestone, returning to its original state. Most likely, these steps were polished in the 20th century before selling tickets to tourists, in order to conceal the rough traces of quarrying. Now crowds of tourists come to Cusco to see the enigma, the secret of the ancient, possibly prehistoric civilization, or maybe even extraterrestrials themselves. But if tourists were told that these stones were formed from construction lime right on the spot during their construction, then the golden hen, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, would immediately stop laying golden eggs. The information about the geochemistry of this children's slide, as it is called, is very limited. It seems to be intentional. I will quote one of the English sources. Rotadero slide. Formed by the intrusion of igneous diorite into limestone, 
with some form of faulting before the igneous rocks cooled. So, it's not diorite but limestone that had some volcanic diorite infiltrate it. What caught my attention the most is the unusual relief of this slide as if it were confectionery cream squeezed out of a large tube with a shaped nozzle. Let's try to model the origin of the Rotadero formation, which, I remind you, consists mostly of limestone, those same 70% of limestone from Burdnikov's sample analysis results. But what does a volcano have to do with it? After all, limestone is a sedimentary rock formed on the Earth's surface. A volcano couldn't have spewed limestone from the Earth's mantle, it simply doesn't exist there. I will present my version of what really happened. Apparently, there was an eruption of a volcano of the so-called linear or fissure type in Sacsayhuaman. The volcanic lava fractured the layer of limestone on the surface of the earth at the eruption site and heated it to approximately 1,000 degrees or more. Under the influence of this temperature, the limestone turned into unslaked lime. The density of unslaked lime is 3.4, remember this number unslaked lime is 3.4 times heavier than the same volume of water. After rains occurred in the area of this eruption, and moisture began to penetrate beneath the layer of volcanic eruptions, unslaked lime started transforming into slake lime with a density of 2.2, which means it is 1.5 times less dense but with the same mass. Plus, the water, which increased the initial volume of unslaked lime by almost two times. This increasing in volume, plastic mass created cracks in the volcanic crust and started to squeeze outwards, just like being squeezed out of a tube repeating the unevenness of the crack's edges, as evidenced by the distinct parallel grooves. In the same way, confectionery cream replicates the relief of the nozzle through which it is squeezed out by the confectioner. Throughout the world, to obtain construction lime, people used to burn limestone in special ovens, while here, there is a whole mountain of free construction material provided by nature itself. But what happened to diorite, pumice, slag, and other volcanic ejecta? Surprisingly, it's a simple question, volcanic ejecta make excellent construction materials. Next to it stands the city of Cusco. It has incorporated volcanic ejecta as a finely ground additive for concrete mixes and other construction materials. Unfortunately, there are no chemical analyses and information available in open sources regarding the composition of Cusco's buildings and structures. Only general statements are provided, lacking details and specifics. Only brief information mentions that many 16th and 17th century churches in Cusco were constructed using andesite stone, a fine-grained volcanic rock chemically and mineralogically similar to diorite. Nowhere is it stated how natural these stones are, as opposed to being artificial. So, we have a mountain of construction lime, still relatively fresh and not yet solidified, located directly at the construction site of the Sacsayhuaman complex. And as we have already established, the limestone blocks of Sacsayhuaman show no traces of organic matter, indicating their artificial origin. This also means that they were not transferred from the quarry to the construction site, but were formed on the spot, earning extra money with construction tools like a grater or a spatula. Formwork is not required for shaping these blocks in place. Just like a sculptor does not need formwork when sculpting clay sculptures. The first row of stones was laid, leaving every other space empty until they hardened. This process could take several days. The spaces between the stones were tightly filled without gaps or cracks, that is the secret of polygonal masonry. To prevent adjacent stones from sticking together, they might have been coated with a thin layer of clay or another substance, the specific material is not crucial. In the same way, the next row was laid. The important thing was for the bottom row to solidify and the upper row to rest on a firm foundation. Once the lower row had hardened and solidified, the upper row was placed on a solid base. Sometimes, the lower row did not fully harden, and traces of the upper row's stones would be imprinted on them. I believe the principle of constructing a wall using the polygonal masonry method is clear. Many housewives didn't even realize that their baking is also a form of polygonal masonry. And here's another undeniable argument that Peruvian polygonal masonry was made from a plastic mass if the polygonal masonry crumbled, for example, due to soil subsidence, it was impossible to restore it to its original state, as the slightest mistake in fitting just two adjacent blocks would propagate in all directions, creating large irreparable gaps. Historians believe that the Spaniards began to use Sacsayhuaman as a source of stones for the construction of the city of Cusco, over the course of several years, they dismantled and demolished a large part of the complex. 
But we have already seen that even in the original location, it is practically impossible to rebuild the dismantled masonry, let alone in a new location. Because these stones could only be assembled once and only in one place. In one of the upcoming films, we will discuss the enigmatic Machu Picchu, which is not enigmatic at all. If we turn the history of the European colonization of Latin America, together with the indigenous people, upside down. For today, that's all from me. And for those of you who don't just want to learn about history, but truly understand it and grasp the cause and effect relationships within, I'd like to recommend my book, The Other History of Roman Empire. I can't thank you enough for your time and attention. Wishing you all the very best in your historical discoveries. With respect, Alexander Tomansky.